Greetings and welcome to today's program here at Kingdom's Teachings. I'm so glad that you've joined us for today's program. This message um, is really a one of those messages where you feel like you're just drawing so much closer to the Father God. And so I'm glad that you've joined us today. And as we go through today's message, I hope and I pray that you will be as blessed as I was when God was preparing me for the teaching of this message and what he spoke to me personally. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word today. And we pray that as your word goes forth, that every heart will be touched and that they will receive a personalized message from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On today's program, God took me back to a study of the prodigal son, which is a parable in the Bible, in the book of Luke. And I've heard that parable taught many times over, but during this particular study, God just kind of took me into a very special place in terms of the um, spiritual application of this particular parable to our lives today, not only as believers in Christ, but for those of you who may be watching today's program and do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So whether you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ or in wanting to go on a deeper relationship with him or deeper knowledge of who he is as our father, or if you're watching today's program and you don't know God as Father, I know that you're gonna be blessed. So let us start with today's message. Today's message is entitled, Returning to a Father's Welcome. And so when we look in Luke chapter 15, verses one through two, and we're also gonna be studying um, Luke 15, verses 11 through 24, which will cover the journey of the prodigal son, but it will also cover the father's response to the son's journey away from home and the son's return home. So in this particular parable, we find a young man who is at home with his father and another brother, and he decides to ask his father for his inheritance. And he wants to go off to a foreign country to expend his inheritance the way that he wants to expend it. And so in this particular parable, the father grants him his request and gives him his inheritance and sends him on his way. Well, within a few days of going on that journey, the son finds himself broke. His inheritance is gone and he finds himself actually working as someone who is feeding hogs and also eating what the hogs are eating as leftover. So when the son finds himself broke and he's gone through his inheritance, He's knowing that he needs to come back home, but he's feeling undeserving of a return trip home. And he's wondering what his father's response will be and whether he will be welcome. And so this is where we pick up on today's lessons in the title, Returning to a Father's Welcome. The first thing that I want to emphasize is that in this particular parable, Jesus is telling the parable and he's conveying the parable to a group of sinners and tax collectors. And while he's telling this parable, there is um, the Jews are standing around and instead of listening to the parable and what Jesus was trying to teach, they were so busy um, being concerned about the company that Jesus was keeping as he was telling the parable. So whether or not you um, are wanting to know Jesus Christ through this message and you find yourselves in a strange place of being out of relationship with him, or as I said earlier, you are believing Christ, but you have found yourself in a place where you um, have kind of strayed away from a, maybe a, a, a pointed place that God has um, spoken to you to remain in. And if you're like me, sometimes we become impatient and we decide to kind of step out on our own. And so um, this is where we want to just talk about what is our Heavenly Father, our loving Heavenly Father's response when we find ourselves in a place where there is, we have distance from God. So what does the parable symbolize? And I want to read to you what God gave me for this. It says, spiritually, the parable is a symbol of those who decided to leave a familiar place that God has provided a covering to go to an unfamiliar place in search of what they think will give them greater comfort and freedom than being in the place and the will of God. And one of the things that God showed me in this is that 
we then find ourselves, because we're out of the will of God, we find ourselves in a very uncomfortable place. We find ourselves in a place where we thought with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul would be a better place. And it turns out because we're out of the will of God that there's no comfort there. There's no provision there. God's grace certainly is there with us. But the materialistic or in the natural comforts that we were seeking in that place turns out to not be what we expected. So as we look at this parable, there are two key words that um, is going to, um, we're gonna study and will be applicable. And the first word is grace. God's unmerited and unearned favor in our lives, even when we find ourselves in a place that he has not called us to be or we decided we would go out on our own. And the second word is repentance. Repentance, according to the Bible dictionary, is a change of mind and purpose and life to which remission, which is the cancellation of the debt and the penalty of our sins, is promised and is received through Jesus Christ. So when the parable of the prodigal son went out the son did not just wake up one day and decide that okay i think i'm going to have a repentant heart and go home the son merely desired to go home and so what i want to share with you today is that when we find ourselves in a place out of the will of god or not a distance from the purpose for which god has called us god's grace and mercy will lead us into a place and an opportunity for repentance. He leaves the choice to us whether or not we will um, say yes to his invitation for repentance and to be reunited with him and re, you know, communed with him. But that repentance is part of the grace that God has provided for us. So in the word today, you know, when we look at this parable, this is reminding us of the very reason that God sent his son Jesus Christ to the earth. In Luke 19.10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So when Jesus came to the earth, he knew the will and the purpose that his father was sending him to the earth to seek those that were lost. And so he did not stray away from that. So Jesus was very comfortable in the presence of the sinners and the tax collectors, even though the Jews were trying to judge him for being in the presence of the people for which Jesus was sent from his father to save in the first place. So you may be asking yourself a question, you know, this parable talks about one son the father had two sons so why is it so important to focus on the one son because Jesus cares enough to seek out every soul if I was the only person that God ever placed on earth Jesus would have still came he would have gone to the cross the same love that he would have shown towards me by coming to the earth just to save my one soul is the same love that God sends to us through his son in Jesus Christ. So I want you to know that you're that one per you may be that one person that's watching today that may be thinking that I've just I'm too distant with God, I'm too far out there. Jesus couldn't certainly care about me. I'm probably hidden from him. I want to encourage you today that you are not hidden from God. He knows exactly where you are and he will expend the same effort, the same love, the same grace that he extends to those of us who are in the body of Christ. So he knows who you are and he loves you enough to give you a father's welcome. So when we look in Luke, there are actually three parables in Luke 15 that will support what I just shared with you. Um, in Luke 15, four through seven, it talks about the one lost sheep out of a hundred sheep. In Luke 15, 8 through 10, it talks about the one lost coin out of 10. And then finally, we get to the one um, prodigal son out of the two sons that the man had. So I want us to think about the fact that Jesus used these three parables to illustrate the power of if just one person or one thing is lost, it does not change the degree to which God will seek out 
he's not into the number thing he will come after the one just like he comes after the hundred or the ten so when we look in verse 12 of Luke 15 um, and the, where the younger son says to the father, you know, give me my property and let's divide the inheritance and let me be on my way. I want us to look at the son's journey away from home because it's important to look at the journey away from the place that God has destined for us in order to appreciate and to have a thanksgiving for how the father welcomes us back home. And so, as I mentioned earlier, that not many days after the son had gone out, he found himself broke, gone through his inheritance, and living in a place where he was never intended to be. And the Bible doesn't say in detail why the son left home. You know, did he not trust the father to be the guardian of the inheritance that he normally would have gotten after the father would have passed? Or did he have some, you know, good idea about, you know, I think I could be a better manager of this. Maybe I want to make my father proud of me. We don't know the reason, and it's not really important, the reason that he left. The reason that he returned is more important to us in terms of what God is wanting to teach us. So in Jesus' teaching about the parable of son, one of the things that we have to take from this is that sin separates us from God. Repentance restores us to the Father's love through the grace and the faith in Jesus Christ that the Father makes available to us. So if you're a person that's watching today's program and you may feel like you're in some distant country away from God, and I don't mean distant country in terms of geographical location, and you may be, <laughs> um, but if you're just feeling distant spiritually and not being in communion with God, again, God knows where you are. And even today, he's standing with his arms wide open saying, you are important to me. I came to save that which was lost, and I have a welcome home for you. So to make this a little more um, applicable um, in your daily life, I want you to think about, as a believer especially, you know, has God spoken a promise to you regarding a particular inheritance? Maybe... Um, he's revealed a purpose for a career path that he wants to take to you, a ministry that he's wanting you to start or to go to a higher level in. But he's given you that promise, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that that is part of your kingdom inheritance in being in relationship with God as the Father. But maybe you're not wanting to be as patient as God is requiring of you to wait it out and to wait on his perfect timing for the release of that. And so I want us to look at some um, areas in our lives that we may be trying to step out of the timing, the perfect timing of God. So ask yourself these questions. You know, has God promised me um, a financial blessing and I'm just tired of waiting on it and I'm gonna make a demand for my finances and not only am I gonna make a demand for my finances to show up now, but I'm gonna kind of decide what I'm going to do with those finances, how I would invest them, that I will create my own investment portfolio. I want you to consider that in light of the prodigal son's parable where he went off and did his own thing. And to remind you that God has a better plan. Malachi 3.10 tells us that God has a promise for even our finances. It says, bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Maybe your demand is for your daily provisions. What will I eat? What will I wear? Um, God promises even with that. In Matthew 6, 31, 33, it says, Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, What are we going to eat? Or what are we going to have to drink? Or what are we going to have to wear? For the Gentiles, the heathens, wish for and crave and diligence seek all these things. And your heavenly Father knows well that you need them all. Verse 33, But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given unto you besides. So God is saying, when you do it my way, not only will you get 
what you thought you were going to get through my grace and mercy. I have even a greater plan that I will reveal to you. Maybe you have a demand for your health. Maybe that you're looking at, you're suffering with some type of, or experiencing some type of chronic illness, and you're in waiting for your healing. And so you've prayed and you're trusting and you're believing God, and you may make the decision that, you know, I think I'm gonna help God out here a little bit, and I'm gonna, you know, go after some things that I think that I need to be doing. I wanna just encourage you, God is a healer. And the word tells us that by the stripes, on Jesus Christ, we are healed. And so I just want to encourage you to keep trusting, keep praying, and keep believing. 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So even if you find yourself in that place of dealing with a physical illness, I am imploring you to pray, to trust, believe and trust and stay under the coverings of our loving Father God for his healing, his way and his timing for your body. God's word tells us that um, we are to make our requests known unto him. And when we make that request known unto him, we're asking in faith, believing and trusting in the faithfulness of God not in our faithfulness to keep asking, but in the faithfulness of God who hears our requests and he will answer us. I know sometimes it may feel like, God, are you really listening to me? He listens. He knows every word that comes out of our mouth. In fact, he knew every word that would come out of each of our mouths before we even uttered the word. He knows our very thoughts. So just know that God has not forgotten you today. And again, he welcomes us home as his father when we make requests unto him. I want us to look at some um, highlights of, of verses 13 through 14 um, in our background scripture. And it says, and there he wasted his fortune in reckless and loose restraint living. And when he had spent all that he had, a mind of fam famine came upon that country, and he began to fall behind and to be in want. Within a few days of being from under the covering of his father, this son found himself lacking a lot of things and living in a place that he was never intended to be, living among hogs and eating what a hog would eat. So one of the things in this lesson is that he was away from the wisdom and he was away from the instruction of his father, which was what kept him secured to be able to partake of the inheritance that his father had prepared for him. When we move away from the wisdom of God and the instruction of God, which is found in the word of God and in God's presence through prayer and meditation, that covering is not there for us to seek his face to seek his wisdom and his instructions. And we will always end up in a place that we were never intended to be. Dining in a place that we were never intended to dine and just not living within the full purpose that God has destined for us. So I wanna encourage you today that our self-sufficiency must always be replaced with, our, with Christ's sufficiency. So our sufficiency is found in Christ. Our covering is found in him. Our wisdom and our instruction is found in him. And it's found in an intimate, personal, up close relationship with him. You know, in this parable of the prodigal son, it reminds me of Adam and Eve in um, Genesis chapter two and chapter three. And this is where we find that Adam and Eve left the safety net of God's instructions to them about which tree they could and could not eat of. And they allowed um, the deception of the serpent to take them out of the place that God had destined for them, indicating to them that, you know, there's a better plan. Like surely God did not say that you could not eat of this other um, forbidden fruit. So the good life that God had prepared for them and in turn had prepared for us if Adam and Eve hadn't done what they did, 
um, had to be covered a different way through the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, because of them falling in the garden and sinning by not being obedient to God. In Genesis 2 and 3, we notice that God had prepared every tree that was pleasant to the sight and also that was good and pleasant for food for Adam and Eve to take partake of. However, when the serpent um, deceived them, they lost their place in that. And so they found themselves in a place actually hiding from God as he walked through the garden and he had to just call out to them, where are you? And it wasn't that he didn't know where they was. It was again, that call to repentance that I know that you've sinned, you know you've done something wrong, I'm still calling you back to myself because I love you and I'm welcoming you even in the midst of the mistakes that you've made. So from the Adam and Eve um, testimony, we need to trust the truth and the sincerity of God's word versus the lies of the enemy. When the enemy comes into your life and tries to give you an instruction, that is in direct conflict, first of all, with God's word, written word, in direct conflict with the spoken word that God has given you, take it back to God, take it back in prayer and in faith. And it's okay to say, God, you know what? I feel like I'm getting mixed signals here. I do that all the time. In the natural, I feel like this is something that's permittable for me to do, but I'm not quite sure that's what you're asking me to do or you're requiring me to do. And even if it's something that is permissible by the written word, but if it's not permissible by the spoken word that God has spoken to you as an individual, again, we just need to go back to the Father. He stands there with open, welcoming arms just to receive us back into himself and to give us that instruction and those words of wisdom that we need. God created all living things, so he knows the nature of his creation and what is best for us. Um, in Psalms 84, 11 through 12, um, the latter part of that talks about no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And why is that important? Because as human, we are so impatient and we want what we want when we want it and how we want it. But if we can rest in the assurance that whatever God has for us, whatever good thing he has promised us, guess what? He will not withhold it from us. We have to wait on his timing and his perfect place. God has a wonderful inheritance that is available to each of his kids. He has a personal inheritance for you. Yes, the body of Christ has an inheritance um, that we will all hope, oh, we will all fellowship with Jesus Christ and one day in eternity we will all be together in God's kingdom family but on today this is a personal message again this is saying for you that one person that I created I love you I care for you and no matter how distant you may feel that you've gotten away from me I will welcome you back home as a father that's full of love and grace when you come to me with a repentant spirit and just ask my forgiveness. And I will lead you on that path, God says. If you're, you're saying, I don't know how to get back there, do what I do sometimes. I just simply say, Jesus help. And he takes it from there. And I promise you that he will take it from there if you say those words. You know, the prodigal son traded his paradise of his father's home and what was a guaranteed inheritance for being a foreigner in a distant land and being away from everything that the father had intended for him. But we don't have to make that choice today. John 15, five says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much fruit, abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. God did not intend for his creation to be separated from him, to be at a distance from him. He created us to be in close communion and in an intimate, loving, father, son, father, daughter relationship. So if God separated himself from us, like we are always trying to separate ourselves from God, 
it would not be long before we would find ourselves <laughs> dining with the pigs. But thank God today that we never have to worry about God leaving us or forsaking us. His word tells us that. And I want to encourage you to, to receive that and believe it, which means there's nothing you and I can do. There's nothing you and I can say. No sin big enough where we would be out of the grace of God. His grace avails himself to us, no matter where we may find ourselves. So as we are um, looking at this message of returning to a father's welcoming, looking at the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus may have used a parable to make this point of his unending grace and love. But Jesus Christ himself is not a parable. He is alive and he is real today for you to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is not a fairy tale. This is not a make-believe. This is a, a living, can come and live on the inside of you through the presence of his Holy Spirit invitation for you to come back to the Father. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, I want to invite you to just take this very moment and to just say, Father, and you can call him Father because he's standing there as a father. So his title doesn't change because you feel like you're a distance from him. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that he went to the cross, that he was crucified. But thank God he was resurrected on the third day so that I can be saved. And I just want you in faith to receive that God has welcomed you home as father, as his son, as his daughter. I just want you to remember that as we've studied today's broadcast, that God's love covers us no matter how distant we may think that we've gotten away from him. And just like the parable in today's lesson, the Father stands ready to welcome you and I back home, not just when we go to heaven for all eternity, but here on earth. Thank you so much for joining us for today's program, and I pray that you have experienced and will continue to experience the loving embrace of our Father God as he welcomes you back home to a place of promise. Be blessed, and we will see you next time for the continuation of our lesson for today.